Mustafa Kemal Atatürk is perhaps the most well-known figure in Turkish history, and for a very good reason. After the First World War, the Ottoman Empire signed the Treaty of Severus, which drastically weakened and made the nation smaller, with foreign powers like the United Kingdom, France, Italy and Greece splitting the land of the empire between them. For this reason, Atatürk and his supporters revolted against the treaty and started the Turkish War of Independence, and after three years of struggle against the Entente powers, Atatürk emerged victorious, expanding the borders of the Turkish state and officially proclaiming the Republic of Turkey. He and his ideology of Kemalism laid the foundations of today's Republic of Turkey, and for his heroic deeds in the War of Independence and being the founder of the Republic, he was given the nickname Father of the Turks. Even today, if you visit Turkey, it's impossible to not see the face of Atatürk somewhere, with countless statues, a cult-like following and other monuments dedicated to him. Even though his CHP party is currently not the ruling party of Turkey, his ideology remains strong in the nation as well as his image. While Atatürk did indeed do heroic deeds and had the best interests of Turkey in mind, there is one thing about him that is not exactly talked about much in Turkey, and that is his effort to completely secularize Turkey and diminish religion itself in the nation. Secularism is a core value in his ideology of Kemalism. However, Kemalist secularism varies a lot from the Anglo-American variety of secularism. While the Anglo-American and other types of secularism advocate more for freedom of religion, Kemalist secularism instead advocates freedom from religion and actively tries to suppress religious institutions. Before the proclamation of the Republic, the Ottoman Empire was seen as the biggest and strongest Islamic nation in the world, with the Sultan holding the title of Caliph, which meant that the holder of this title was the main civil and religious leader of all Muslims across the entire world. Making Turkey go from the leader of the Islamic world to a state which practices a more radical form of secularism did not come peacefully especially because the majority of Muslims in Turkey were conservatives. In this video, I will explain and explore the anti-theist views of Atatürk and his ideology, and show how he destroyed centuries of Turkish Islamic culture in the nation. Atatürk did not hold his anti-religious views his entire life. When he was younger, he was fairly religious, often seen praising the Prophet Muhammad and God in some of his letters, especially before the Italian invasion of Libya. But it's clear that something in his life caused him to distance himself from religion. But this begs the question, how did Atatürk manage to gain so many followers after the Treaty of Severus? As I mentioned earlier, the majority of Muslim Turks were conservatives, how did he manage to overthrow the Sultan and beat the Entente powers, despite its taboo views on religion and government? Atatürk himself was aware of this, and so he decided that the only way to gain any sort of following and support among the Turks was to lie and pretend that he was fighting for the cause of Islam. Atatürk needed nationwide support to justify armed resistance against the Entente occupation. But that is not to say he was completely powerless. He already held an important position in the Ottoman army, and after the Gallipoli campaign, he was seen as a hero of the Ottoman nation. And yet, that alone was not enough to sway the Turkish people over to his side. So Atatürk hid his real views on Islam and religion itself and still kept up his charade of being a religious man. He attempted to appeal and secure support from both the Islamic world and the Turkish population by stating that he was still fighting in the name of the Sultan as well as the Caliph. His quote-unquote goal was to free the Sultan from the control of the Entente powers and form a new government with the Sultan still in power. During the War of Independence, 
Ataturk was seen alongside many members of the clergy and praying alongside them, which would earn him more and more support from the Turkish Muslims. One time he stated, quote, Our religion is the most reasonable and natural religion, and that's why it has become the last religion. For a religion to be natural, it must comply with reason, science, and logic. Our religion is completely appropriate to them. End quote. In the end, when the Entente powers were defeated and the Turkish national movement came out victorious, slowly but surely, Ataturk started showing his true intentions, now that he gained legitimacy and power. Using his influence as a war hero, he prepared to draft the law on abolishing the Ottoman Sultanate. And on the 1st of November 1922, the Ottoman Sultanate was officially abolished. A little less than a year later, Ataturk would proclaim the Republic of Turkey, and by putting his most loyal followers in high positions of power, Ataturk had betrayed and stabbed his Muslim followers in the back, who helped him win the very same war that got him into power, and thus, the first steps towards turning Turkey into a secular state began. A year later, after the Republic was proclaimed, the 1924 Constitution came into force, which was based off of the 1921 Constitution and still included a variety of the laws from the former. One of the things the 1924 Constitution included was, quote, the religion of the state is Islam. And this exact phrase would be removed from the Constitution in 1928 by Ataturk himself. Even though Islam was the quote-unquote religion of the state for four years, it was clear that this was only on paper, because Ataturk had already started implementing reforms to weaken the position of Islamic scholars in Turkey and made it so that every aspect of religious life was controlled by the state. In 1923, the CHP party started making changes to the law on treason. The biggest change that came in these new amendments was that anyone who expressed opposition to the abolishment of the Sultanate, either verbally or through the press, would be considered a traitor to the Turkish nation, and his sentence was death. Many religious offices in the nation started getting abolished one by one by the government, and in their place, the so-called Directorate of Religious Affairs was established. The Directorate was given the task of controlling and maintaining religious life in the nation, mainly through imams, preachers, sheikhs, and mosques. In 1925, the Hath Law was passed in the nation, which introduced Western-style headwear and started cracking down on fezes and turbans. This was seen as a ban on religious clothing by Turkish Muslims, and started an uproar against this law. In response, thousands of Muslims were executed in many cities across Turkey for opposing the new law, and refusing to abandon religious clothing. Thousands of Islamic religious schools were shut down by the new Directorate of Religious Affairs, seeking to steer people away from religious education and more towards public state-funded schools, which encouraged and taught Kemalism to the younger generation. The Minister of National Education at that time was Shukru Sacharoglu, who would later even become Prime Minister of Turkey. One time he stated, quote, Religion is poison. It will take us 30 years to eradicate Islam from the minds of people in Turkey." End quote. Considering the fact this man was the Minister of Education, it was clear why religious schools started getting shut down and children sent to state-funded public schools, in an effort to wipe out Islam from the minds of the younger generation in the Turkish state. Refik Ahmed Sevengil, who was one of the deputies in Ataturk's CHP party, later stated, quote, we have dethroned Allah alongside the Sultan. Factories are our temples." End quote. With all of this, Ataturk's true ambitions were finally revealed, the aim of eradicating religion from the minds of all the people in Turkey, and even he himself later admitted his disdain for religion. Quote, I have no religion, and at times I wish all religions would end up at the bottom of the sea. 
This is Islam, an absurd theology of an immoral Bedouin, a rotting corpse which poisons our lives. This quote is especially ironic, because only a few years earlier during the War of Independence, he stated that Islam was a religion of science and logic, and now he is openly discrediting it as a rotting corpse. Now, he had no reason to play the religious man he once was like during the war. Now, all bets are off. Some other things Ataturk implemented in Turkey were Banning Nikah, an Islamic religious marriage ceremony Banning government oaths sworn to God Prohibited the use of Arabic during Friday prayers Removing the Shahada from military flags and any other symbolism referencing God And many more Perhaps the most ironic thing that Ataturk ever stated was, quote, Those who use religion for their own benefit are detestable. We are against such a situation and will not allow it. Those who use religion in such a manner have fooled our people. It is against such people that we have fought and will continue to fight. End quote. I believe you are probably already aware of the irony here. After all those speeches about Muslim unity during the War of Independence and praising Islam, Ataturk himself used religion as a tool to gain power in Turkey, and then proceeded to betray every Muslim who fought alongside him in an effort to eradicate religion from the nation one by one. Now obviously, Kemalist Turkey under Ataturk cannot in any way be compared to that of the Soviet Union under Stalin in terms of religion, because Stalin was a lot more brutal and direct in his efforts to exterminate religion in the Soviet Union. But that still does not change the fact that Ataturk wanted to secularize as many Turks as possible and weaken religion's role in society, even going to extreme measures like shutting down religious institutions. Now, that is not to say that Ataturk was completely evil. He did liberate Turkish territories from the War of Independence and tried to modernize the Turkish state as best as he could, but his extreme policies of secularism just never really sat right with me, and as a religious person myself, I just cannot see myself supporting him or his ideology because of those actions. But in the end, I sincerely hope that Turkey will have a bright future ahead of her, perhaps embrace more traditional values and slowly move away from secular Kemalism, and I sincerely hope that the Ottoman Sultanate will be reborn one day under a constitutional system. Wait, wait, you, you think I'm talking about this guy? Well, at least Ataturk managed to keep the economy afloat.